101.1 FM and AM 1160. We're talking about the community garden this morning, and we're talking about it with Aaron Lehman and Misty Hunt and Kelly Elliott. And our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Morning, everybody. Morning. How are you? Thanks for having us. Good to have you all with us here today. So Community Garden, for folks who don't know Aaron, where the heck is it? So Community Garden is at In Town Park in Homer City. It's where the basketball court and tennis court is. Mm-hmm. So what we've done is we've gone on the side there and, uh, you know, we, we started Community Garden. Um, a couple of years ago, I was driving somebody to Robinson and uh, realized that there was no grocery store there. And that's when I first realized about food insecurity and that that's a really big deal. And then when, um, you know, inflation happened and food prices went up and everything, I was thinking, how can we help that? So I called Misty, who... I as a gardener, avid gardener, and and I was like, hey, look, what do you think about a community garden? And I thought it was just going to be a community garden, a place where people can come and get produce and, you know, for dinner at night and everything like that, and people would come and help out. But then they brought it to the Community Garden Learning Center. So now we ran a a grant for ARP to try to help people that are over 50 in Indiana County and Homer City, um, you know, the Learning Center part of it came in really well because that way people that are giving us the grant, hopefully we get it, it's going to be to put a pavilion up and also mm-hmm. raise garden beds, which Misty will and Kelly will talk about. So what we're trying to do is just make it all-inclusive for everybody in Homer City and the surrounding area to come. Everything's free to get. We just put some shelves in so and a cover so, you know, food doesn't go bad. And um, But on that note, I'm just going to bring, hand it over to them because they do more about this. I just, uh, you know, kind of not do a whole lot. <laughs> but yeah, so Misty and Kelly, you just basically took a, a simple idea and and ran with it. We huh? really ran with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So tell me about it. Uh, well, uh, how did it uh, develop in your minds, and then how has it been implementing all of those different ideas? Uh, Aaron, when he approached me about building a garden, I I don't have any uh, uh, experience with a garden or anything like uh, as far as community goes but I have my own garden so I said well, I don't know Aaron I can build you what I have at my house that's what I know <laughs> and so we threw some stuff in there and I had a bunch of extra plants that I had already started that year and that's what ended up in the community garden um, mm-hmm. because we were doing it really quickly so this year we at- reached out and we asked some people about their input and on what they would like to see there so we have a little more focus on what we're going to be planting but yeah. I basically just took what I'd have at my house and, and replicated it down at In Town Park and Kelly jumped in and helped me and gave me a good hand and our our friends pitched in and we built everything in a, in about a month and we planted immediately after that and yeah. it was it was a quick thing and it, we had a very good success but um you know we did we did things a little out of the season and out of the time frames I mean, that we should have and this year we're going to actually get started when we're supposed to cuz yeah. you know we're have more time to plan so. tell you what i have you between the mics let's get you over to it okay mic. is that better go. And, and we'll just Kelly share this well. one can yeah, we do can, this you can share it just yeah. like All right. that and, wonderful um yeah so i just i just planned it the way that i have mine and then kelly came in and and she's been helping come up with some ideas and activities that we can draw people in with the kids and she she's mm-hmm. really creative and she's great with with kids activities so kelly um, tell me why don't you tell him something uh, about yep that's where the learning center as well gets tied in there so um, just really kind of emphasizing again on inclusivity we want both young and old um, anywhere in between to join us at the garden Um, and this is really a true learning experience for these children Mm -hmm. to get them to understand that you can have a passion for growing to watch everything from seed to table essentially and just really understand that they do have with their little tiny hands they do have the power to do those things and to Um, essentially grow food for their family. And like Aaron said, with the food insecurity, it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to go into your backyard with your family and pick something that you grew with your hands and you nurtured yourself and feed your family. Um, and then just really teaching kids that... Um, so we're, I, I essentially just like all the parts of the garden. So we're going to do things like have a bug hotel so they understand that you know, bugs could be scary, but there there are bad bugs and there are good bugs. And the good bugs are very beneficial for the garden. We're talking about earthworms and ladybugs and mm-hmm. just kind of teaching them all the, the full scope of what a garden looks like. Yeah. Um, and just to go ahead. 
And the opportunity to work with um, older folks, too. Absolutely. Uh, is, is a wonderful educational opportunity. To work hand them. in hand, to bring, kind of bring down that generational wealth of knowledge that they've had, mm -hmm. um, and then just express that with the kids as well. So it's just a an all-around learning experience for everybody. Yeah. The kids can teach the, the, the adults, the adults can teach the kids. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, Missy, I'm guessing uh, that uh, older folks who've been gardening for years, uh, they're at home or in some other setting, uh, when they get a chance to sort of pass on their their lore uh, to to younger kids, it, it, it's a thrill for them, isn't that, it? Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, I I was taught by my grandparents, and and I learned a lot from them. And I feel like somewhere between that generation and my kids' generation, which is essentially our generation, we've lost that because we've had to work, and you know, you didn't have time to sit down and do those things, and the climate of the world was a little different. And now we're just trying to reconnect that and get kids back out into the dirt. And doing things that we did traditionally that our grandparents were used to doing. And then our, our location at In Town Park is actually near some senior housing. And we've actually had some of them come over and spend some time there and hopefully help them get out and do something fun. And, and just be around kids it makes you feel youthful again, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it just pass on that good vibe. So, so this year's garden is already growing? Uh, we actually have everything ready to go. We'll be doing our first cold crop planting at the end of this month on April 20th or April 30th. It's today's the 20th. Um, and then we will actually be planting like the tomatoes and peppers after the last frost, which will be the end of, uh, of May. We're, we're actually going to do it the second week of June because that's when we can get everybody together and we'll know we were out of the, the woods with the, the cold weather and we kind of just let it grow. <laughs> but there are, there's, there's garlic down there right now. There's some chamomile and all the pollinators are coming back. Things are popping up. It's springtime and, and yeah. the garden is waking up and, and we're preparing it for a, a new season. But we'll have stuff in very soon. But right now we're taking that time to, to create a classroom, you know, a, we're going to have the library down there. We're going to teach them about composting. That's something that we added this year was a compost space. And mm -hmm. we just keep adding and adding and adding. And eventually we're going to have a really nice little space that has yeah. everything that we need. And, yeah. and we keep gathering more people. And that's the idea. We're going to get more people so that then it's, me and Kelly can kind of step back and let everybody just There's have right. their garden, yeah. you know. So. How big of a space is it that we're talking about? Our actual garden parameters are... Um, 28 by 64 currently mm -hmm. um and that's what the fence the fence line is so it's, it's a pretty sizable yeah, space but um and there's still room there's room for for uh, more stuff to go in there room which is why we made it I, I dream big and and then i i filled up the space yeah. as, we, as we get the money so last year we got the main beds in and we're, we have trellises and stuff like that so we can grow a lot of stuff in a small space which is what i've had to do my whole life so i figured mm -hmm. we would apply that same principle that we can get as much bang for our buck so yeah Aaron we were talking about uh, or you were talking about a pavilion yeah so the pavilion is going to be something that we uh, hopefully we get a grant and that way you know when we have people that are over 50 come they can have some shade they can do like for example canning classes that way people can learn how to preserve food that's one of the other things that they're talking about but you know it would be a way to get out of the weather get out of the sun we have a playground there so people can also kids can play while the parents are learning, kids can learn. I've had a lot of parents say that, you know, the, their kids, they love the garden. They love coming over to the garden. Another thing we're going to do with learning, and it was kind of cool, is when I went to the Indiana Farmers Bureau meeting, they have a mobile um, farm that they can bring, uh -huh. and you are uh, immersed in farming. So that, as long with the garden, we're going to be, you know, hopefully getting that. And then people can come, and they can do some learning about how, to, how farmers do it and that type of thing. So we're going to expand and the things that they're doing to expand this is incredible. Um, yeah, and I just can't say enough about these two. I mean, and, and everybody else that is helping with the community garden. I mean, it's a true passion of Homer City, and it's a true um, jewel of Homer City, and it's yeah. wonderful that, you know, people are actually doing that. So hopefully the pavilion, and we're also going to try to get raised garden beds. So mm -hmm. Misty had told me about this, so you can, uh, you know, get a wheelchair underneath it. So like tabletops. We have yeah, raised tabletops. beds, but we want it, they're, they're built I'm sorry, like a see. tabletop mm -hmm. that you could scoot underneath if you were in a wheelchair so that you could still do some gardening. Yeah. So, so yeah. there's different types of beds made for different types of people, but we don't have those yet. And that's my goal is to try to get those in this year because I think that would finish out our, our you know, our accessibility issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's off to a great start. If somebody wants to get involved in it and they're not yet, what should they do? That's a great question. Okay, so we have a Facebook page that's dedicated to the to the garden. The easiest way to get a hold of us is that we also have an email, but you can find that on the Facebook page. Um, 
that's where we keep everybody up to date. So we try to keep all the information on there. We also have an Instagram that Amanda Oaks started for us, which she's amazing. She's been doing all of our flyers and stuff like that. So it's nice to have actual talented people that can do that come in and help us. And um, so if you're on the social media, either Facebook or, or Instagram, you can keep up with us there. And there's contact information included in there to mm -hmm. get a hold of us. And we, we try to organize it. We have some forms, to, like an online form you can fill out two weeks. So we can get all of your information. We're going to send. We have newsletters we're sending out to everyone who gets involved. And so just, just find us on Facebook. I think that's the easiest sure. answer to that question because that's where all the information. We have been hanging up paper signs and stuff like that, too. Um, for those of, of the folks that maybe aren't on the Internet or aren't avid on Facebook. So, yeah, we try to include everybody. And, and we also, the school has been sending out in the Friday folders for us as well. Uh -huh. So, you know, we're, every venue we can use to get the word out, we've sure. been utilizing it. Sure. So, wow. Yeah. Sounds like it's going to be a great fun, fun time for everybody involved. Hey, thanks, everybody. So, so for real quick, in. on the 22nd. Okay. At four to six, where this Saturday we're having a ribbon cutting. Okay. So anybody that can come enjoy, Missy's gonna and Kelly are gonna have some good things there. So um, if anybody even wants to come, come down and check it out. Mm -hmm. You said four to six. Four to six on the twenty second. The same day Saturday. earlier than that at twelve thirty, our public library is having their first um, like lesson that I'll be helping with, and and so if anybody wants to sign up with that, they can contact the Homer City Public okay. Library. So. Thanks all. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. All right. Thanks.